Hello, it's time we start doing some scripting within DCS. Today we are going to go over some basic scripting and see how we can manipulate messages as well as create an activation script. I will briefly explain some of the code as we go along, however this is not a Lua tutorial and I'm far from a programmer, so it's probably best if you get familiar with Lua before trying to do too much scripting within DCS. Also, I will not be using Moose or Mist in this series as there are many tutorials already on them. Instead, we'll just be sticking to the basics. So let's get started. In DCS, we are somewhat limited on what messages we can output, and it's near impossible to modify these messages once the mission has been launched. However, with just a little scripting you can open the door to make much better messages that can be changed as you require. The techniques we will be using will also apply to other things we can script within DCS in the future, so this is a really good starting point. Let's look at a simple message example. Here is a message with some very basic formatting. We have a title, some information, and some coordinates, along with some decoration. We can put this directly into a message box and DCS will output it properly. However, it's not very dynamic and it's hard to change it during the mission without a bunch of different triggers, flags, and conditions, which can be a pain in large missions. With scripting, we can manipulate this message throughout the mission and use it over and over by simply calling a function. To get started, we need to create a table to store each line of our message. Here is an example based off the convoy mission we have been working on in this series. To keep it easy to read, I've left the lines very generic. Now we need to create a function that will output this to a message within DCS. Within this function, we need to define a few variables as well as get a count of the number of entries in our convoy brief table. To do this, let's create another function to count entries in a table. This function can be used to count the entries in any table throughout our script by calling it with the different table names. We'll be doing this later when we add our activation function. Now we have our variable memo that we will be sending as a message and we know how many lines it has with the memo lines variable. Now we need to create the message that will be output. We'll use a for loop here and we'll add a line to the message each time it loops through with an operator. After the new line is added, we want to go to the next line. We do this with an escape sequence character, again added to the end of the line. However, we don't want to do this on the last line, so we'll put an if statement in to check that condition. Once this loop has completed, you have a full message that can then be sent to DCS using the trigger.action.outText singleton that we covered in a previous video. So we now have our message broken into individual lines, a function to count the table entries, and a function to put it all together and output it. We will now need to load the script file in a mission. For testing, let's create a simple mission with a single convoy. We'll add a trigger that will load the script file a few seconds after the mission has loaded. After the mission is loaded, this script file will run and the information will be stored where we can use it when needed. Now we'll call the function when the group reaches waypoint 1. Let's load the mission and see if everything is working. Everything seems to be working, but before we go much further I want to talk about asserting files instead of loading script files. Currently if we make changes to our script file, it will not be applied to our mission. We can quickly test this by adding a message at the beginning of our script file and saving it. Now when we relaunch the mission, you will notice that that message didn't work. That is because the mission still has the old script file embedded. For testing, we can use an assert file command instead. This will force a load of the file every time the mission is started. We can do this with a do script action. You will need to change the path of your Lua file to fit your system. This will enable you to make changes to your script file and then just reload the mission for the changes to take effect. 
This can be an enormous time saver, so I highly recommend figuring out how this works. However, it is important to note that when you are done testing, change your trigger back to a do script file so that it will embed your final script file within the mission file. If you don't change it back and you try to share the mission or you move your script file, it will break the mission. Okay, that was a lot we just covered and it was very technical and not very exciting, but it was important to get things set up so we can use them later. Before we continue, let's delete the script we had on our convoy waypoint 1 as we'll be calling our function from our activation script from this point forward. Now we can add two more convoys and name them convoy 2 and convoy 3. Next we'll change the percentage of the convoy 1 and 2 to 50% and we'll make sure that 3 is set at 100%. This will ensure that we always get a convoy to spawn. Finally set all three convoys to late activation. For testing purposes, I'm also going to add an observer. This way we can see what's happening without having to try to find the units on the map. Now we can set up the code to activate one of these three convoys. We'll add a convoy activate function and within this function we'll create a table with the convoy group names. It is important that the names in this table exactly match the group names within DCS. Now let's count the number of groups using our table counting function that we created earlier. Here we can run a for loop to see if DCS has decided to activate one of our 50% groups. A quick note here, DCS will determine whether to spawn a group with less than 100% during mission loading. Being this is how it works, all we must do is see if it exists, and if it does, activate it with the DCS singleton activate group. Being we only want one of the groups to spawn, we will also break the for loop once it finds and activates a group. Remember we have convoy 3 set to 100%, so we will always get a group no matter what. What this does is give us a chance to have one of the other groups first and then break the cycle so we don't get more than one group spawning. Let's also modify our brief based on which unit is spawned. We'll check here to see which group is activated with an if statement. So for example, if i equals 1, then we'll change the brief lines to match convoy 1 and then we'll do the same for convoys 2 and 3. I'm keeping this very simple for the purposes of this video, but you can have some fun here with your titles, threats, and descriptions. As long as your entry is a string, it should be output with no problems. For now, we are not going to do anything with the coordinates line. Eventually, we will want to use a script to get the chords and fill this in, but that's for another day. A quick note, there are many ways to go about doing this. I just chose this method as it is easy to visualize. So now we've set our briefing, all we have to do is call the function that will output it. Currently this script will not spawn the convoy because we haven't called the function yet. Let's just call it from within the script file itself this time. If you are asserting a file with the do script action we talked about earlier, you can just save the script file and reload the mission. However, if you are using the load file action, be sure to update your script file within the trigger. Let's test it out now. We can reload the mission with Shift R until every different combination has spawned. This way we can ensure that they are all working. Let's take everything we've learned so far and apply this to our convoy strike mission. Don't worry, we don't have to rewrite the script. We only need to make sure that we have three groups in the mission editor with the names Convoy 1, Convoy 2, Convoy 3, and then we need to load the script. We don't need to call any functions anywhere else because we did it all within the script file this time.
With this done, let's give our mission a test run and check that everything is working as intended. Everything appears to be in working order and we now have a much more dynamic convoy strike mission that will change every time we load the mission. I hope this very basic introduction to DCS scripting has helped and possibly sparked some ideas for greater mission creation. Check the description for links to some very useful sites if you are just getting started with all of this. Thanks for watching.